So, on the feast of the Holy Family, which we celebrate today, we think of uh, our own families, which I think is it's kind of hard not to. You know, we're speaking so much about family. And what's interesting about family is Christmas time is really uh, a, a time for the family. You know, people come from back from holidays, uh, the family gathers around for family meals, is all the usual family traditions and that kind of thing. And uh, generally speaking, it's great. Or at least we really want it to be great. We, we, we really want Christmas to be a time for the family and a time for peace and a time for unity. Uh, it's, I think it's, it's a great desire in each one of us that the, that the, the, the family, as such the, the, the unity of the family, the love of the family, be recognized and deepened every Christmas. But what can happen, what does happen, is that the reality of family can often hit us as well around Christmas time, where you know we go home and uh, it's all it's all fun and games at the beginning, and uh, oh it's, it's it's great to see you know the the brother or whatever. But then after two or three days, oh there he is doing his typical thing now, of having to always decide what we watch. And uh, oh yeah, it's, it's great to see dad again, but there's typical dad doing his thing as well and you know, arriving late for dinner. Or there's um, granny and sure, oh, it's great to see, well, it's great to see her two days ago, but now uh, here she is just constantly rabbiting on and slating everyone in the family, you know what I mean? So at the beginning, the idea is lovely. The idea is fantastic. But then after a couple of days, the reality <laughs> kind of hits you. If you've been away for a while, the reality of family kind of hits you uh, that it's, Janie, it's anything but perfect. Anything, our, our families, they're, they're, they're not perfect. Uh, even on, on Christmas Day, like I was just getting different texts from, from, from different young people, and they're just describing the reality of their family situation. You know what I mean? Where there's alcoholism, where there's addiction, where there's uh, one, one girl I know had to actually leave her family on Christmas Day because her mother became violent. You know, so like th the reality of family cannot often be well short of the mark, way off where it should be. You know, but we really want family to work. We want family to be, to be a good place, to be a safe place. Uh, why is that? Well, that, I think it's because every one of us comes from a family. There's no, we've no choice, all of us. There was a mom and dad there somewhere. You know, all of us come from a family. So we want, we want that, that kind of original relationship, that basic relationship to be solid. Because it's, it's kind of the foundational relationship for, for Everything else that the love my parents gave me, this is, this is my foundational relationship. We've, we've said this before, like that often you see with, the, with teenagers, they go off and, you know, they, which they should do in their late teens, maybe preferably over 18, they go meeting different girls or different fellas, and uh, if that relationship then doesn't work out, they say, they get, you know, you're going out with a girl, and then she breaks it off after six months. Um, yeah, it's not... It's not you, it's me, you know, it's a great, great time together, but I think we should just be friends. Uh, you say, okay, and then you return back to your basic relationship of your family, okay? And then hopefully another couple of months later, you ask another girl out and go for a few dances and so on and so forth. All right, and if that doesn't work out, you go back home. But what happens when there isn't a solid kind of a foundation in your family? You ask this girl out, and you're going out for two or three months, and she breaks it off, and then you, you're just in free fall. You've nothing to go back to, nothing. You're just, you're, 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 your world has now collapsed. Your world, everything, everything that you loved, you put all of your time, ener energy, effort, money, everything into this girl, and then she says, no, no, you're not good enough. So now you're just <whistles> And then you have 18, 19 year olds going suicidal because their girlfriend broke it off. You know, the, the, family, the, family, the family situation, the family, it, it's, it's this foundational building block of society. So we really, really, really want it to work. But the reality is that families are messy. And that's what the crib actually shows us. We mentioned this, I think it was on Christmas Day, um, that, that, that the crib shows us an actually quite untidy, messy scene. Right? You've got straw all over the floor. You've got animals. Right? You've got shepherds. You've got sheep. You've got Jesus in a trough. Okay? This, this, this isn't like a sterile environment that we would be so used to when a, a newborn was brought into the world. You know? uh, this is messy. This is, it's kind of, it's almost ugly, <laughs> but the, the family, the, the unity of the family within it makes their surroundings beautiful. So our families uh, are, are imperfect, far from perfect. I was even watching a few episodes of The Crown uh, over my Christmas holidays there with my dear mother, 
who has some sort of a fascination for the royal family. And uh, yeah, very interesting there as well. If any of you have seen The Crown, if any of you are watching The Crown, it's decent enough, I think. Uh, but what's really, really interesting is there again, you've got these people who I think many would be envious of. They live in castles. You know, they have uh, a fairly substantial wage coming in. They don't really have any financial concerns like most of us, like mortgages and things, uh, bills to pay. That's not really a problem that they have. And yet, despite living in castles and having all the frocks and shoes they want, marriage breakup, all the usual problems with infidelity and addiction and unhappiness. Marriage is breaking up left, right and centre. It's very, very interesting, like, you know, how, again, we really want the family to work. I mean, we want to have these ideals for the family, but so often we fall short. So, what's the point of all of this? The Holy Family shows us what it looks like to have Jesus at the centre. And once you have a, a the, once the heart is right, once the centre of the family is right, everything around it will actually, will work out. Everything will work out in time, not, not immediately. I mean, there's no, there's no silver bullet to this, to, to the messiness of our families. But having Jesus at the centre, having the Lord at the centre, that does change everything. Because not everything we do financially is going to work, and your health is eventually going to fail. And there will eventually be disappointments and jobs will be lost and econ economics will, will come and go and up and down. Like, all these things are, 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 are unstable. But having the Lord at the centre of our lives, this changes everything. This changes everything in our families. Because it gives a sense to everything. Then if things don't go well, we have a hope that doesn't come from us. We have a strength, a grace that doesn't come from us. If things are going well, we have someone to thank without just presuming that it was all us and our amazing abilities and our amazing wisdom and gifts and talents. No, it was, it was the Lord blessing us. So having the Lord at the center of our families, it changes everything. It changes absolutely everything. And this is the, the renewal of the family that we all hope for. It's the renewal of the family that we all pray for. Because the, the family is the building block of society. And there's a a good friend of mine in the, in the States, his name is Devin Shad, S-C-H-A-D-T, and he started a group called the Fathers of St. Joseph. And he would argue that society goes the way of the family, and the family goes the way of the father. Society goes the way of the family, and the family will go the way of the father. If the father leads, leads the family in prayer, if the father, as he would phrase it, it's a beautiful phrase, if the father sets the pace of self giving love. If the father sets the pace of self-giving love, the family will follow. And so it's amazing that in the Holy Family, St. Joseph as such is the least qualified. There he is having a son who's God, uh, a wife who's perfect, and then there's him. Now he's a saint, he's, 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 he's very, very good, <laughs> but he's not God and he's not perfect. And yet he's the one to whom the Holy Family is entrusted. He's set to lead the Holy Family, protect the Holy Family, and provide for the Holy Family. The least qualified to do so, but he does so. And he does so perfectly, as far as we know. Perfectly. Perfect dad. So the Holy Family, uh, they went through situations that we probably wouldn't, we don't really maybe, maybe we don't think, we think that, look, since Jesus is God and Our Lady is perfect and St. Joseph is a saint, that they had it easy, you know, and everything would have been plain sailing because, you know, because they had God, everything must have been perfect. No, everything must have been fine. No, they had their difficulties, but they had unity because God was at the center. And that was what allowed them then to flee to Egypt, to a foreign country where they were not liked. Jews were not liked in Egypt. Remember the whole Red Sea situation? A lot of ancestors of the Egyptians died there. So Jews, Hebrews were not popular down in Egypt. And then they come back and, you know, the slaughter, the, the, the divine innocence, all this kind of thing. I mean, horrible situations. But despite the environment around them being, they lived in an occupied country, despite all of, this, all of this mess that they lived in, they had a unity. They had a love, they had a hope because the Lord was at the center. God was at the center. In our uh, emblem, our I'm not sure if, if you've heard the explanation for this, uh, our, our, our little logo for Holy Family. 
obviously we see St. Joseph, he's slightly taller than Our Lady, who's there, and Jesus in the center, and plenty of room for all of us. The idea, by the way, of, of, of a chasuble, if I can just find it now, uh, in our reading, uh, St. Paul talks about putting on love, if I can just find it, uh, so putting on love, that's what this, this, this vestment is called a chasuble, it goes on top, and that's, that's what the chasuble is supposed to be, that on top of everything else, all the other parts of, of, of our vestments, they, they all have symbolism, um, the alb for purity, the cincture, the, the belt, the rope around us for, for chastity, the stole is for, to represent priestly power, so the authority that, that priests have to celebrate mass and forgive sins, but over all of that, over over all of these, these, these abilities and decisions and, and all, over all of our lifestyle, everything that we, we choose to do for love of God must go love. Love goes on top. So, love of God, love of our neighbor. And in this, we imitate the Holy Family. We, as a priest, you're a father. You, you have to create a family around you. The family in a parish, the family in your religious community, whatever it is, we have to create family. And we always model this on the Holy Family. And how do we do that? by putting God at the center. And that way, whatever the messiness of our lives is, whatever the unfortunate circumstances are, whatever the, 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 the addictions that we're trying to overcome or that we see in others, uh, whatever painful circumstances that we're going through, even in this period of, of goodwill, this season of Christmas, put the Lord back at the center. Put prayer back at the center. Give the Lord his rightful place. And the light of our Christian hope will shine in your lives. And we will see how all things come to the good for those who love the Lord. May the Lord bless each one of us and our families today and always. Amen.